Hello, I'm Wendy. Today we're painting trees and foliage in watercolour. It's a demonstration including tips for beginners. I've been really drawn recently to the, um, the views along the river where I walk the dog. It's, um, it's really beautiful. It's, um, it's got the, the summer trees and it's got the um, Himalayan balsam growing in patches along there. I know it can be a bit of a menace, it's quite invasive, the Himalayan balsam, but it really is pretty and it comes in all different shades. It comes in dark pinks, reds and even whites in some places. So um, I'm really quite drawn to that. I've done um, a video previously and I'll give you the link. It's a smaller picture. Concentrates more on the foreground. So in this particular demonstration, I'm not going to talk a lot about how I did the foreground. I'll talk a little bit more about how I tackle the tree because I did that differently than the, the previous video. There were only a few leaves on the trees there, while these trees have really got a lot of the summer foliage on them. I'll concentrate a little bit more on that. I won't narrate all the way through, there will be some music, but where appropriate and where I think you'll be more interested, I'll give you a few more details, a little bit more narration. I hope you enjoy it and I hope you pick up some tips for your own paintings. I did a pencil sketch quite loosely. Um, if you follow my channel you'll know that I do do quite a loose sketch because um, I do change it and alter things as I'm painting, seeing how the painting develops. But I have got um, a main composition in mind with the river with distant hills and some trees in the foreground. And I've got the foreground flowers which I'm masking out. There is a link below in the description to how to use masking fluid if you're not familiar with it. I'm using a couple of brushes for the masking fluid, um, one slightly bigger, dotting around for the flowers themselves. And then you'll see I use an old rigger. It's a little bit bent because it's been left in the water, but I use an old rigger to do the stems. I'm working on a block. I'm working on a Saunders Waterford, £140 block. I just put the masking tape around to, um, to give me a nice clean edge to sort of frame the picture when it's finished. Sometimes I do that, and the times I don't bother. I'm using my usual palette of colours for um, for this sort of picture. I'm using cobalt blue with yellows and with raw siennas for some of the lighter greens. Popping a bit of sap green in if I want it a bit greener. Sap green is a lovely colour and mixes really well. The darker greens, um, I like to use Prussian. Prussian will always give you a darker green mixed with any of the yellows and raw sienna. But to get the really dark greens, you want the Prussian blue with the burnt sienna. That will give you a nice green for the darker sort of shadow areas inside the foliage. My browns are mixed mainly from ultramarine and burnt sienna. If you wanted more of a greeny brown for the trees, then pop a bit of Prussian in there or a little bit of a sap green to sort of indicate the moss growing on the tree. For the sky area, I used a very dilute raw sienna wetting the area quite thoroughly and then with a mixture of cobalt blue with a touch of light red or ultramarine with a touch of light red a wet into wet distant tree line. I did introduce some uh, some more greeny colours to suggest some of a nearer hedgerow above the water line and then using the wet in wet technique then I did some reflections in the water.
So when this area was totally dry, then I started on these um, on these trees. There's a lot of foliage in in this picture, and um, you can get into a lot of trouble with watercolour, getting everything too dense and too dark. Quite recently, I've um, I'm working sort of like this with um, I'm starting with a dry brush technique um, using the lightest colour that I can see. This is using the side of the brush. It's quite wet, but what I'm trying to do is put these first light strokes on that I'm seeing, but leaving that sky area showing through. And then what I'm doing is I'm changing to more of a pointy brush. And when it's dry or almost dry, um, I'm going in and I'm painting some of these, I'm doing these sort of leaf shapes over the first strokes that I put on, which were much broader. But what I'm finding is if I do this, I'm trying to keep and I'm managing to keep those light areas of the sky showing through. So you've got to be a little bit disciplined and just put these darker leaves on where you've got those first brush strokes. Don't put them where the sky is. I find that really a useful way of working these trees because then you're not going to get them blocked in. So you can see now that I'm going in with the third layer. Generally I'll put three layers on if I'm working like this, but um, maybe towards the end of the painting I might find it needs a little bit more dark in some areas. The next stage was the foreground area and as I said previously um, I'm not going to do a lot of narration on this if you um, if you want to know a little bit more then um, go back to that video that I made um, a few weeks ago and you'll find more information on it. The thing to do about um, I think with the foreground is to make sure that you've got a variety of colours in there and that you've got some tonal differences. You'll see where I, um, I did make some tonal differences over the tops of the light area there.
So all the time in this foreground area, what I'm trying to do is to um, vary my brush strokes to make it more interesting. Brush strokes are going to be very individual to each artist, so um, you do the sort of um, leaf shapes and grass shapes that you particularly like. But the thing to be aware of is, as I said, and I'm always saying, is to change the colours and change the tones. Don't have it looking too monotonous. If you get these colour changes and tone, tonal changes in there, then you're going to get some depth in the foreground and it's going to look a lot more interesting than doing the same sort of labouring strokes over and over again. And work more loosely and make it more interesting. I think the masking flowing underneath um, is going to make quite a big difference too when that's rubbed off. So at this stage then I started work on the tree trunks and the branches. I wasn't using any particular reference for this painting, I was looking at several of the photographs and looking at the shapes of the trees and how the twigs came off and the branches, so I was keeping an eye all the time on my reference material.
When everything was totally dry, then I rubbed off the masking fluid. Um, you might be interested, I'm using a special sort of rubber for this called Mask Away. There is a link in the description box below. It's really, really good and uh, it gets the masking fluid off. You might want to finish off with a regular rubber or your fingers just to get the last little bit, but I can recommend it. And then what I did was I just did a little bit of fine tuning on the foreground. I added a few darks just to accentuate some of the white areas, as you can see. There was cow parsley mixed in with the hogweed here, so um, I did put a few little shadows underneath the uh, the hogweed flowers and then used a few different um, shades of pinks on the um, on the actual Himalayan balsam themselves using a very small brush here and again fine tuning a little bit going in maybe with um, a few darks underneath the flowers just to pick them out without overdoing it hopefully and without overworking it. I did put a little bit of colour over the uh, massed out areas on some of the reeds because um, I thought they were a little bit too white and I also added um, a few darker leaves on top of them as you can see here. So this was my final painting. I was quite pleased with it. I, I, I like the tree particularly. I think it does work well that technique. Um, it's keeping those light areas, isn't it? And those those holes that the birds can fly through, I think, is really important. If you do like the way I paint and you like my channel, then do subscribe so that you don't miss anything in the future. I'd love to see your paintings in my Facebook group and you'll find a link for that in the description box below. Bye for now.